Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity, upper left-hand corner. We have Master Ray starting as the white Protoss, upper right-hand corner. We have Kiko starting as the pink Terran. This is going to be on Wavelet, which officially was the winner of the New Worlds map contest. I believe another season is on the way. So standard awesome natural expansion. You've got uh, kind of an exposed... This is kind of interesting because I feel like the third base... How do I... How do I put this? This third base is like decent to defend because you, you can see it's just got like small entrances to go ahead and run up, but it's almost like the defense point ends up being away from your third, where it's like this is the big area that you have to worry about attacks coming from. And also grabbing uh, this interior base can be huge. So it's, I don't know, expand. It's an interesting map. I'll just leave it that way. It's fun. It makes interesting matches. The macro matches end up being like interesting ground control games. Uh, I want to compare, it's almost like it's um, like Revolver, but revol without the Revolver natural expansion, is I guess what the way I think about it. I don't know. Other people can comment. It's a fun map, is my opinion. Uh, Master Ray taking game one very, very comfortably, in my opinion. Uh, there were moments, and I, really what I think it came down to is, and this is what I'm going to say is uh, an occasional flaw in Kiko's play and why I think he actually does so much better when he does the two factory openings and plays more aggressive with his mech play is sometimes he can be too hesitant. He can he can slow play it just a little bit too much. And when he does do the slow play situations, oftentimes what ends up happening is if he can out macro his opponent, if he's playing against a player like, um, I'm trying to think of players out there that are overly aggressive uh, that... Uh, I'm trying to think of like season one Chobo League winner, but the, my brain is escaping. Point being, if he can play defensively mac uh, macro and allow his opponent to just run into him being overly aggressive, it pays out for him. But oftentimes he can end up being too cautious. And if his opponent goes macro behind that, Kiko oftentimes is too slow to respond. And I think that is what we, we saw in game one. I've seen him lose various STP, STPL matches uh, in that same fashion. I think that is a weakness in his play. It looks like he is going to get first scout into Master Ray's base. Master Ray opening up uh, Gateway 7X Core once again and putting a pylon, second pylon in his base along that back edge. It looks like he's going to get last scout on Kiko, unfortunately. Uh, Kiko does have the three SCV and gas. Let's see if he opts once he has that factory down to kind of slide out of this. But this is why I feel like, though, Kiko has pretty decent micro mechanics. I feel like when he gets more aggressive with those early openers, because that is pushing away from his. Uh, his uh, proclivity to play a little bit too defensively it ends up being a big advantage for him in the long run unfortunately for mastery if kiko is he going to build a second uh, let's see if that second marine is out before this probe is in position he might be able to pick this probe off and deny all information to mastery second marine moving up on the ramp taking some damage that probe actually wiped out not even able to escape so small victory for Kiko early. He gets the scouting informa uh, information. Master Ray going to play in the dark. Let's see if this forces Master Ray to be a bit more aggressive. He's going for the range upgrade. He does have a second Dragoon queued already. And I like what Kiko is doing. He's actually moving this uh, SCV out to go ahead and rather than bring it back to home base. And it looks like Kiko is going to, in fact, open with two factory here. We'll see if Master Ray can defend it. I like that. He's So he's denied information. Let's see if he actually built... He is building additional Marines to go ahead and cover this natural expansion to deny additional scouting information. Let's see if Master Ray will be in position to defend it. It looks like he is opting to go one gate into expansion, which might play right into Kiko's favor. So, But the one disadvantage of going the two factory builds on Wavelet is if you just look at this mini-map, this is a huge distance that Kiko is going to have to cover to push this up and Kiko getting a little bit this is an interesting play so he's moving up with this SCV he wants to get a scout on that natural expansion Dragoon trying to blockade did manage to hold that so he's trying to deny scouting information by having these SCVs planted a little forward he might end up losing SCVs as a result I think he or sorry losing Marines as a result I think he realizes the situation that there's two Dragoons there and he's going to lose that fight so he's backing off double machine shop behind this with an initial siege tank, but Master Ray has to know upon seeing this natural expansion and no, nothing being built, no barracks, nothing else behind this, that he's going up against some sort of factory push and seeing the siege tank before anything else. Let's see how he responds. He's got a robotic facility plopping down. Is he going to move up and drop an additional gateway? And is he going to cancel that nexus? Looks like he's going to keep that nexus up. Now, comparatively to what we saw in the round of 32, where we saw this uh, push kind of play out in the face of, I think it was Dreamer got knocked out. This is a much longer distance to try to cover. Three gateways dropped. Might be able to 
creative sufficient defense. And I like what Master Ray's done. He's left these Dragoons here at the forward position. And he's actually reinforced with three Dragoons to buy himself time to force Kiko to more or less micro and, st and stutter step potentially these troops. So it's going to be, it looks like a, as far as this push, this is going to be three siege tanks with vultures to follow, speed and mines uh, behind all of it. Let's see if Master Ray can even pick off a Marine, uh, do some additional damage. You can see that just microing in this. Now he can just stutter step his way back. That soft softens a lot of these units up and that also potentially buys time because you can see Kiko has to be a little bit more careful with his troop grouping. But pressing out now has still four Marines, three siege tanks and vultures to follow. Mastery trying to soften up those Marines on the fort. Now he's got four Dragoons here. One of these siege tanks is also softened up. And you can see where Kiko backing off, trying to repair and playing a little bit more slowly. That's allowing additional Dragoon reinforcements to be produced. Although it looks like Mastery missed queuing. And so he's going to have one less Dragoon in the front. I like what Kiko did here, though. Sneaking these Vultures along to the south. He's going to try to pin these Dragoons in and actually plant mines behind them. Oh, this is brilliant play. So although the Vultures look like they revealed themselves. So let's see if the Dragoons just go for... Yeah, it looks like they're just going to stand, try to take out a siege tank. So one siege tank down. Honestly, I wish those vultures hadn't revealed themselves and they just backed off and allowed them to wipe themselves off. So those four, four Dragoons down. However, a lot of siege tanks were wiped out, really softening this attack up. Pylon on the low ground. Natural expansion is mining. The vultures getting a little bit too far forward. They did manage to get one mine down. Kiko all over this natural expansion. One mine blowing up on two, these two Dragoons. But I don't know that Kiko has enough to get this done. Probe's pulling off a line to try to defend it, and it was just, yeah, long distance. He lost a lot of those siege tanks to Master Ray in between all of this. More vultures flooding forward, but there's plenty of vultures to defend behind this. So, yeah, Master Ray is going to lose a handful of probes, but he's going to keep his natural expansion. This was a big economic build. The SEV is here, but there's no Marines to fill a bunker that would be built. So it's just there for, I guess, support uh, build or support repair, I should say. Build? Technically, that's building, right? Master Ray losing all of those probes that natural expansion, but more Dragoons are flooding out, and they're going to push this two-factory push back. Now, keep in mind, Kiko still hasn't taken additional base behind this. The Dragoon, another Dragoon getting picked off uh, behind all of this, but Master Ray successfully pushing off this attack. Again, just a very long distance uh, to push, and I think Kiko usually... Again, I'm going to uh, say Kiko really executes those two factory pushes fairly well. I think this is more of a factor of just the huge rush, uh, the huge rush distance to try to execute this. And I almost would have rather seen this attempt at this build uh, on Ascension comparatively. A bunch of pylons being plopped down for Mastery to make sure those vultures can't sneak through those gaps. Continuing to press forward into this. And uh, more, vul more vultures being produced. Kiko still not dropping uh, anything behind this, but Mastery... Ooh, it looks like some vultures managed to sneak behind this. So nice little bit of micro there by Kiko. Getting into the main. Might even get a handful of probe kills behind this. Got some mines planted. Yeah, the probe's trying to flee. And actually, actually, I like that play. Pulling the probes across. So he loses a probe or two, but it delays the vultures. And some nice economic damage here from Kiko. Single, uh, two dragoons getting wiped out by those mines. But in the meantime, so Kiko with the small wins. Master Ray preserving a lot of these probes, starting to move them back in in the face of this vulture with the single Dragoon uh, to engage. Another mine up here to the north, though. So I'm not going to say that Master Ray did a great job of mitigating losses. Uh, Kiko doing a pretty good job of, honestly, slowing this economy down with what he had through some nice micromanagement in between. And this vulture still alive in the main, finally getting taken out. But behind this, so here's the thing, Master Ray, behind all this vulture harassment, losing all those probes, he's actually behind 25 probes to 29, as Kiko's getting his natural expansion up. the one So Kiko actually, between all of that aggression and everything else, is actually coming out slightly ahead uh, economically in the midst of all of this. However, as far as a follow-up, he expended a lot of troops to try to defend this. He's got three siege tanks to defend and not really a front door seal to defend against a large amount of dragoons that are now pressing into... The natural expansion so he's going to have to defend his natural expansion if he can hold this and keep up his macro i think he's actually in a pretty, a pretty decent position as far as a follow-up into the mid game he's getting that armory down now getting some additional vultures to maybe get some i don't know that he's going to have an opportunity to get these vultures out and get any sort of mine control or should I say map control via mines a better way to say that on this map because you can see they're just taking a lot of hits practically dying before it was even able to wander out to the front. Let's see if that barracks lands. You need, it's a good idea to have, yeah, a little bit of that uh, front door uh, bricked out. And that, so the observer is going to be able to see the siege tanks moving in position to go ahead and clear that out. The Dragoons, yeah, kind of staggering out. And now, Q 
Kiko back into a defensive slot. At his main, getting his own engineering bay. Master Ray has, still has... He's just sitting on that three gateway. I think he's going to plan and just go ahead and grab that fourth. He already has a probe in position to grab that 11 o'clock base. Natural expansion still doesn't have a gas. Doesn't have gas. He does have a shuttle, so he could potentially do some elevator harassment. But I think that's more of a defensive shuttle to do the the potential zealot drops. Kiko pressing into Master Ray a little bit with these siege tanks. So I think he wants to take his command center a little bit earlier than normal off this initial two factory. And it looks like Master Ray taking a couple free hits behind this. He doesn't have the shuttle in position, nor does he have Zealot leg speed. And it looks like some turrets are going to be there. And that's also going to open up these vultures to kind of sneak through. But Master Ray very cleverly planting a handful of Dragoons to the north. You can see some mines just being planted down. So yeah, I think Kiko's plan from here is like, I want to grab my third, get my upgrades up, potentially go to 200, 200 and play from there. Master Ray, however, doing a pretty good job macroing. He's getting that 11 o'clock base. And with this contain, it's almost turning into, although with a different opener, more of a repeat I think of game one, potentially here. But this time, I think Kiko uh, doing a pretty good job of being aggressive. The Dragoon's actually flooding forward on these siege tanks. Let's see if the Zealot bombs end up behind this. That shuttle taking damage. The Zealots are, it looks like three Zealots are able to flood out. And is this, this might be a game ender. Mind drag, only two siege tanks left. Although a lot of the, oh, this is unfortunate. These three Dragoons are getting distracted by this barracks behind that. If they had been up with this attack, that might have been GG. Instead, Master Ray, yeah, takes out that barracks, which is going to slow some additional factories from being planted down. But that's going to allow Kiko to reestablish his front. He went for a dropship behind all of this. I actually missed that. Uh, still doesn't have level 1 weapons. Maybe he can get something done with that drop. But Master Ray, yeah, doesn't have a, a lot of troops to follow this up to see if Kiko utilizes this opportunity to go ahead and sneak vultures out on the map and again get some mine, mines planted. Uh, add additional expansion. Still no second gas for Master Ray. Master Ray again going up uh, to gateways. Let's see if he goes for that gateway flood once again and tries to play it more of that macro-oriented style. He's got the Citadel of Adun coming online. Siege tank dropping in the low ground. Dragoons are there to engage this dropship and potentially take care of this vulture pretty rapidly. But this third base... This is more of an annoyance more than anything. It just means that probes can't... Yeah, you can see the probes actually coming back. It's going to be a little while before Master Ray can really clean this up. He's moving up two Dragoons to deal with this. Looks like he... Yeah, cleaned that up well. So now we can go ahead and transfer. So a little bit of delay there overall. Both players... Actually, Master Ray a little bit thin on troops at this stage of things. Another Vulture drop moving across. It wants to go ahead and drop with a natural expansion. There are already Dragoons there in position to go ahead... And deal with that. Probe transfer to the 11 o'clock base. It looks like one dropping out, dropping. Oh, and this is key, actually. Master Ray wandering up. I think he wanted to take that fourth base. But the probe being stopped. So a little bit of a victory for Kiko. But a bit of a victory for Master Ray as well. Because he sees that dropship and its positioning. And actually sneaking behind here. And seeing that there's still only three factories down. Which is a big indicator that it's... This is Kiko playing a little bit thin. Honestly, on the factory count. But I don't think Master Ray is in a position to really make him pay for it, though. So Master Ray... Up to six gateway count. He hasn't really plopped down a lot of the additional gateways. He still looks like, okay, finally he's got uh, that additional gas up. The dropship on the corner to provide a bit of a threat. And now Master Ray going ahead and grabbing that 9 o'clock location to go up to four base play. As Kiko's just now starting to build and get in a position to take his third. Uh, level 1 weapons is online. This is enough of attack troop from Kiko, honestly, that I think he could press. And Master Ray has a thin enough attack force. That's spread out enough that maybe he could have gotten something done with that. Uh, but I don't think he has the... He didn't have the map awareness or presence to really know to utilize that. And also, there's been other slowdowns in other sectors. It looks like Zelt Leg Speed is now coming online. Academy also plopping. And you can just see Kiko, yeah, staging up to go ahead and press forward and push Master Ray out of his third. Unfortunately, this is turning into a situation where he's grabbing his third. Master Ray is already going to have his fourth online. Uh, kind of that situation once again. This pocket force looks like it's going to be able to engage these vultures. Yeah, and Master Ray, it looks like mostly playing... Yeah, just going to play the macro-oriented game. Sit back. Kiko, if he's going to win this, yeah, it's going to be on these drops or these vultures. It looks like that dropship got taken out. The vultures managed to land. They get a single Dragoon out of it. However, it doesn't look like they managed to get any probes. Did this... Is this still got a vulture in it? No, it looks like it's... So the dropship wasn't taken out. But at least getting scouting information, if nothing else, sees the Arbiter Tribunal... Sees the only single Stargate 
and knows that Master Ray is going for more standard long game Arbiter tech. I like the Vulture in position to go ahead and interrupt that. The Dragoon's also interrupting that third base, so Kiko's going to have to mount some sort of attack force to go ahead and evict the Dragoons out of his third. Finally, so this is this is going up to seven factories at this stage of the match, and this feels very, very late to go up to that second, uh, that additional factory count uh, in the overall play. I could be off on that, but uh, yeah, it just feels very, very late overall. Master Ray with a big supply lead, a decent economic lead. The Dragoon starting to press forward and clear things out. This is actually going to be a critical little bit. This Vulture in between might be able to pick off uh, a handful of probes. Looks like probes are being built on location. I like this Vulture in the bottom left-hand corner to go ahead and scout things out. Master Ray also making sure that additional expansions haven't been taken or hidden. He's going to go, yeah, it looks like he's definitely in Gateway Man uh, mode at this stage. He hasn't plopped down a lot of the additional gateways I think he has been looking to, maybe because of delay on saturation. He's actually floating a lot of minerals. Let's see if he continues to build, if he if he floods that out at this stage. He's starting to mount a pretty sizable army. He's at he's 40 supply up, which is a huge lead. The Vulture sneaking into that 9 o'clock base. It's getting wiped out very, very rapidly by a Dragoon follow-up. So Master Ray playing a bit more defensively is in position to do so. Kiko very thinly saturating that third. He's going to maybe transfer practically everything from his main because this is going to be out in uh, not too long from now. And Kiko, I just don't feel like he has enough factories. He's only got these two machine shops to the right still. Uh, is trying to build a lot of Vultures. The Vultures haven't really been out on the map doing a lot of harassment. He does have the double armory uh, upgrades going versus the single forge upgrades for Master Ray. I don't see a lot of the Arbiter. So you get the single Arbiter, but not double Arbiter tech. I don't see any High Templar out. So maybe this will play out, but this is going to be four base for Master Ray. He's got a huge supply lead overall. He's got a big bank that he's rolling behind all this. So Kiko, to stay in this match, needs to be able to slow play it to go ahead and grab a third. He is going to have the, the upgrade advantage down the line, but if Master Ray opts to go ahead and engage and attack anytime within the next practically five minutes, uh, I think he's going to end up just flat out winning this match just because he has an overwhelming... Dragoon count, although at this stage it's mostly in a defense, it's kind of just in a pseudo defensive posture slotted back here. And you can see he's already going ahead and checking that three o'clock base. He's he's happy to let Kiko sit back there, take the rest of the map. I'm wondering if he's going to start planting some expansions out and start prepping for potential late game guerrilla style uh, play. Still no third gas being grabbed. Maybe just going to wait for that arbiter before he, he plops things out. Let's go ahead and get a, a firm count on the gateways because they're kind of spread out. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, not up to the 12 mark. Main is just about expended. We do have double forge, but both forges are currently silent uh, for Master Ray. He does have level one weapons, but eventually maybe the upgrades will be equalized. It looks like the Vulture's sneaking through. They are going to be able to potentially pick off that probe to delay Master Ray from taking additional base right there. So yeah, picking off that probe right there. A lot of Dragoons flooding that direction. So Kiko... So Master Ray at 200 supply at this moment, but he's not showing any aggression. Kiko does have level uh, serious level uh, weapons upgrade advantage, but Master Ray is basically sit, uh, sitting back and letting him hit that 200 count. I do like what Master Ray is doing by grabbing expansions that are far away from Kiko, again, to potentially set up for that, okay, you come at me, I'm just going to whittle your army and then starve you out sort of style. Uh... And just kind of do the you know the run run everywhere the Terran army isn't. Usually I like that with more arbiters and recall and and things just to make it more harassing. It looks like, looks like some more vultures going to be able to sneak through before the cannons are in place. Master Ray, uh, huge bank, big army starting to move out to the middle of the map, but still hasn't been able to really stop these vultures from sneaking through and doing a lot of damage. Let's see. If it looks like a lot of cannons there. The dragoons coming from the north they should be able to clear that out kiko at 165 supply and i think this is just going to be a waiting game from this stage on until kiko hits potentially 200 200 and near max upgrades before he's going to opt to to move out into this and then from there the question is going to be did master ray bank enough resources does he have a does he prevent a front door seal at his natural expansion does he have enough infrastructure at far away locations Second Arbiter out. Looking for where the first Arbiter stage. It looks like right about here. One critical thing for Master Ray is he did invest in the Double Forge, but those forges are just now starting additional upgrades. He's only got that level 1 weapons otherwise. So it's going to be a while before his troops hit as hard. The Vulture's sneaking through. 
Might actually be able to take these cannons out, and you can see Master Ray pulling back out of position. These probes are not long for life. Poor sacrificial probes. Um, not sure that it matters as much at this stage of the match, because I think it's, again, going to come down to favorable trades. And I got to say, Master Ray's been very, very sloppy with his Dragoon slash Mine Discipline. He's run a lot of Dragoons this match straight over Vulture Mines, and Kiko's done a pretty good job of flooding these out and getting them just all over the place and in position, finding an Arbiter right there with some troops underneath. Just going to, like, uh, maybe not, uh, and flood back. Planning a preventatory mine at that 3 o'clock location. Kiko near three, 200 supply. Now, keep in mind, with a 200 supply army with superior upgrades on Terran side versus a just pure gateway army of 200 supply on the Protoss side, usually Terran wins without some masterful engagements from your Protoss without, like, a huge amount of Arbiter and Stasis support. Looks like Recall has been upgraded from Master Ray. But as far as uh, the Stargates remain silent in between here, and I think there's only maybe one or two Arbiters that are even... So there's the second Arbiter. It's got a decent amount of energy, but there's only two Arbiters out in the field. So it is possible that Kiko could potentially win this just by having that nice uh, upgrade count. I like that this... This is a great science vessel on patrol. You can see worried about that recall. Kiko near 200 supply going to go ahead. And this is a huge amount of siege tanks, Goliaths, and vultures. So if Kiko slow pushes this, pushes straight out the natural expansion, Master Ray is going to need to scurry to rebuild in this bottom left-hand base. But the critical thing as far as this setup goes is look at Master Ray's bank. As far as his ability to rebuild in the midst of this, he can rebuild multiple times over. In fact, if I was him at this stage, I might even just start planting a bunch of stuff now. And it looks like he's read my mind because he's already starting to uh, plant a bunch of gateways in this bottom left-hand corner and go refugee style uh, overall. So Kiko's going to have his work cut out for him. The problem for Kiko is going to be playing the whack-a-mole game where it's like, yes, maybe he presses into the main and disrupts this. This might slow down uh, the upgrades, but he's going to have to worry about recalls behind this. Uh, and it's just going to be like chasing down Master Ray and it kind of, play, you know, trying to catch the, the rabbit where it's at, basically, around the map. So it's kind of a game of cat and mouse, but with a lot of metal and explosions and a lot more blood, a lot more... Well, maybe not. Cats are pretty vicious uh, when they're going in... Anyway, Kiko <laughs> blockading his own uh, potential fourth base. His main's mind out, his natural expansion's mind out. He doesn't have much of a bank. He should start thinking about taking a fourth while he's kind of pressing behind this. And that's so, But Master Ray, what he's going to need to do is basically be everywhere at once. Engaging this army and basically being everywhere where Kiko's big army isn't. You can see him starting to filter few, and he's already got kind of pockets of troops set up around the map to do just that. To kind of go where Kiko isn't. Uh, potentially some stasis might allow... Like an incredible stasis on this grouped up siege tank thing might be able to make it happen. These Dragoons peeking into that 3 o'clock location. You can see they're already trying to sneak underneath this. Kiko constantly comsatting, trying to keep an eye on the troops where it is. This is what Master Ray cannot afford to do, though. If he just pushes up a handful of troops and ends up getting them obliterated over and over and over again, then he will end up losing this match in the long term. Because this mech army is just so efficient and so powerful. Uh, more, Yeah, a bunch of gateways here in the bottom left. That territory being sieged. Master Ray with practically 10k minerals behind all of this. And Kiku is just now starting to move out. Looks like some SCVs are going to distance mine at that 3 o'clock base. Kiko at 200-200. Master Ray slightly under this. Is he just going to... He's not even going to bother building a command center behind this. And the Dragoons, yeah, you can just see he's just trying to peck at troops at the distance. So both players playing very, very passively now at this stage. What this is allowing is, is this is allowing Master Ray to get some of those critical additional upgrades behind this. He's at level 2 weapons now. Needs to keep these forges running to equalize that uh, upgrade differential. He's also getting level 1 weapons, which I actually would like to hear Protoss's, like, uh, unless you're switching, doing a carrier switch, which is possible on this map, I'm curious about the, so, and, and we are also getting the air armor. Air armor makes sense to me if you're going for more Arbiter play, but I'm wondering if this suggests that Master Ray's thinking about potentially going and swapping back into carriers. Kiko moving into the middle of the map. The stasis is going to be critical. Manages stasis a lot of these troops behind this. The science vessel is still overhead. The zealots getting on top of a lot of these siege tanks. Looks like a lot of them from the north as well. But Matt, you can just see with the upgrade differential, Master Ray's army absolutely plummeting in supply count. And Kiko able to wipe out... Actually, 
Master Ray getting a lot of this just because look at the immense amount of stasis underneath all of this. So actually getting pretty good, a pretty good shot out of this, but Kiko way up in supply all of a sudden, although much of his supply, I don't even, I, I wish I could just give you a quick rough count of how much supply is captured in blue crystals. This is an immense amount of stasis, but Kiko still reinforcing and rebuilding behind this. Secondary question is, is how quickly can Master Ray refill and Master Ray at risk of Kiko going ahead and boxing him into this main. You can see some troops already flooding out to potentially get a pincer attack. Kiko is starting to mine that three o'clock. Kiko moving up as some Zelts and Dragoons flooding from both directions. No stasis support this time. And this is a nice splatter from there. Some reinforcements coming from the north before Kiko was able to get in C's position. But this is my concern without those upgrades and without the High Templar or Archon support is Kiko's powerful upgrades and just massive amount of troops just rolling through what is left. So kind of splitting the difference. Let's see if he just sneaks in and moves the skeleton crew to deal with that nine o'clock. But it's the slow play from here. And the question is, is can Kiko get it done? You can see he's, oh, and it looks like there was going to be a carrier switch, a bunch of gateways here to the bottom left for Master Ray, a potential. But he's kind of getting caught in the midst of this. However, if Kiko, Mech is slow. So looks like Kiko, I like this. So he's just planting some siege tanks to the mid to the midfield. He's like, okay, I'm just going to leave these for last because who cares? You'll just run out of resources. He's going to splorch everything in the bottom left-hand corner and then cycle from there. But Master Ray, again, trying to be where Kiko isn't, flooding in some Zealots and Dragoons, kind of piecemeal to that 3 o'clock base. Kiko already has uh, a bit there to go ahead and defend against it. So this is going to be a slow push. There is an Arbiter overhead to go ahead and engage this. There's no... Maybe that Arbiter will be sufficient to go ahead and clear the rest of this out because there's no Goliath there. And Master Ray moving in in the middle of the map to go ahead and clear out that split attack force and also cut off, it looks like, Goliath that might have been trying to reinforce. He actually might even be able to engage in the middle. So Master Ray doing a good job, at least at this moment, of being where Kiko isn't. Flooding some troops in, and this is going to be critical. If he can shut down this base, that's going to be a big hit on Kiko's economy. Kiko realizing it, he's going to go ahead and try to flood as many SCVs out as he can. It looks like a lot of them are going to die. No ramp block at this stage. Master Ray continuing to try to defend. It looks like he actually he's going to be able to clean out a lot of this attack force at the bottom left. So still holding. A nice stasis there to the north. Dragoons continuing to press forward. And actually, Master Ray all of a sudden looking like to get to some sort of contain on Kiko's natural expansion. Although going ahead and backing off uh, behind this. It looks like we are seeing the carrier switch now. In progress, a single carrier uh, in production. Let's see how many carriers get built before Kiko is able to roll through this, or if Kiko is even going to be able to roll through this. This three o'clock base has not been uh, retaken. Kiko has a bit of a bank himself now, and it's starting to look equal to Master Ray's bank. So natural expansion has been wiped out. This is a lot of. This is a big investment to lose for just taking out that three o'clock. I'm not sure that it's worth losing two bases, a bunch of gateways. Uh, to take this out. So I kind of like Kiko's play in the midst of this. Let's see if he rededicates and re-engages with a lot of this. There's a lot of Dragoons and reinforcements, though, to press this attack bas uh, back. So Kiko's got his work cut out for him. Kiko trying to sneak an expansion in that bottom right. The Zealots look like they're going to be able to clean up what's going, uh, everything in this natural expansion right here. And now Master Ray, all of a sudden, with a supply lead, the weapons upgrades are starting to equalize. He's got level 3 weapons, level 1 shield, and level 1 armor. Let's see if he keeps up uh, with the upgrades overall. He does have uh, some carriers being built. The carriers, keep in mind, do have at least... Let's see if I can find an Arbiter to let you know the weapons upgrade. He's level 1 weapons in air. But keep in mind that's going against level 3 weapon upgraded Goliath on the tech switch, potentially. Now Kiko moving in. Now that he's wiped out that bottom left-hand base. Moving in, wiping out that 9 o'clock base. Although this has been already expended. So it's mostly dealing some SCV troops. It looks like Kiko also going to try to move into the 3 o'clock base. So this is just like players everywhere trying to get little bits of uh, damage accomplished where they can. So the Dragoon's going to be wiped out. That's going to allow Kiko to go ahead and get a second base up. I think he just lifted off. No, he did not lift off his natural expansion. He went ahead and built a, built a command center there. An Arbiter seeing this expansion in the bottom right. I'm not sure if Master Ray is going to opt to engage that or not. He's still holding. It looks like he held everything in the bottom left and still working on that carrier tech switch. Although he's supply blocked now, so he needs to expend troops to continue with that, but no problem. Going to go ahead and walk in to try to clear out those siege tanks to the 9 o'clock. Don't want to call this a, a pirate victory exactly. And Kiko actually opting to, rather than worry 
about having to defend this. He's just going to lift this command center off. Is he just going to plop it down to the natural expansion? Maybe he's just trying to hold... Wants to have less holdings, less to defend. Now backing off. Master Ray regrouping. It looks like, yeah, he was starting to attack that bottom right. That was an interesting play from Kiko. He's like, I'm not going to bother trying to defend this. I don't want to be overextended. So I'm just going to lift and exit. Leave this command center alive where I can take it further down the line. And uh, play the match from here. Unfortunately, if he just leaves it floated here, that might be carrier bait uh, overall. Kiko, Master Ray still with a, a decent sized bank. Also sees the carriers flooding across to that bottom right. Moving a couple vultures back across. A decent sized attack force here for Master Ray. And it looks like a secondary attack force here in the bottom right. Kiko at 200 supply yet again. Looking for where that army is going to strike next. But critically, I'm not sure that Kiko has a... I don't think he's prepared for this carrier switch. I mean, he has a handful of Goliaths, but I don't know that he has enough Goliaths to really mitigate this. So he might want to attack into Master Ray to free up some supply to allow some more Goliaths. However, he's hurting for minerals overall. He's got a much smaller bank than Master Ray. SCV, and actually, Master Ray, I'm not sure if this is luck or planning, briefly catching those SCV and transfers. Doesn't look like he was able to pick out any of them, unfortunately. Arbiter swing back around. Maybe wants to get a recall at that 3 o'clock. The command center is still floating there. So at least he's going to see that. And that handful of Goliaths, actually, those Goliaths staying alive is going to be critical in the midst of it. This big recall into the 3 o'clock over all of the turrets. And if Kiko loses this space, he will end up losing the match. Good stasis on that back edge as well. Vultures moving in with the Goliaths. SCV's coming off the line to go ahead and try to attack and defend this. More SCV's transferring here because this is Hiko's last mining base and carriers now engaging here. And I don't see any Goliaths to provide additional defense. So Master Ray basically mining in this bottom left-hand corner while he's taking out Kiko's last mining base. This could be the winning maneuver. Three Goliaths moving up. Looks like they are able to get focus fire and it looks like the carrier is not responding in kind. Group attack on that Zealot to try to clear it out of this third, but a lot of SCVs dying in the meantime to splash fire and everything else. Kiko dropping in supply is really hurting for minerals to try to defend this. So Master Ray in a decent controlling position. Some vultures finding some probes in transfer in the bottom left-hand base. Still anybody's match. Master Ray doesn't have as large a bank as he once had. He does have a pretty sizable standing army out and about the field, but this mech is still very, very dangerous. The carriers are slow as far as their ability to defend. And Master Ray is still mining out of two bases, but it's still two base Protoss versus one base Terran, which is, in theory, about equalized. Mind drags, good EMP right there, catching that Arbiter. The Siege Tanks catching a lot of that army on the low ground, so Master Ray losing a lot of troops, and that's going to put the army count even, which is going to make things even for Kiko overall, or ahead for Kiko overall. Siege Tank on the low ground, just chewing through those Zealots as they're trying to walk around absolutely everything in this midfield. And Master Ray now in trouble, because he needs to think about, first of all, not losing everything in the bottom left, but he needs to think about going ahead and grabbing an additional base to keep that economy rolling. Kiko needs to think about expanding behind this as well, but this is a pretty beefy mech army that's barreling down and I'm not sure if Master Ray has sufficient defense uh, to punish it. Although I don't see any Goliaths again and I do see Arbiter, or sorry, Carriers nearby along with those Arbiters. Let's see if we do see some Goliaths reinforce this uh, forward position. So that could be the mistake that ends up winning this for Kiko is having those Carrier, oh and this Carrier feat has gotten more sizable. We now have six Carriers on the field for Master Ray. And that will be sufficient to go ahead and clear this out, particularly without... And Goliaths can mine deep, deep reinforcement points. And this is only a single Goliath. And Group Repair is not going to keep that thing alive. So Kiko is going to have to go ahead and unsiege and exit. He has some Vultures checking out that bottom right. It is possible he's going to think about taking that base. But I think Master Ray might have won this at this stage. Because you got the Carriers continuing to press forward. They're picking off the Goliaths as they're not quite able to get the Focus Fire in the middle of the map. Chasing down a lot of these siege tanks. Kiko's still sitting at just this one base. And I don't think Kiko's going to be in a position anytime soon to both attack and defend. And the carrier threat with the recall threat and a lot of these other troops that Master Ray has fielded, that's going to allow him to sit comfortably mining these two bases, continuing to grow his economy. 
and to play through this. So bottom right, and critically, this could turn into who can control the bottom right. Who can go ahead and establish these bases? Kiko trying to sneak an expansion and drop that and hold it. He does have some mines in the way, but I feel like Master Ray overall, between the carriers, between the ground forces, and between the two active mining bases, is in a better position to go ahead and seize the additional expansions that are out there. Looks like Kiko, yeah, just trying to sneak this expansion, trying to reinforce with Goliath right there. A carrier is clearing mines and killing SCVs in between. Still this attack force from Master Ray. Master Ray playing a little bit slow. Okay, it looks like he's finally getting Zealots and Dragoons to go ahead. I think he realized the situation. He's starting to move out. He's going to be able to... Actually, might even be able to kill that command center before anything else. These Goliaths getting a little bit greedy because this is enough of attack force to kill that Goliath. And the Goliaths plus the carriers are not going to be... I mean, that's going to be a devastating two-pronged attack. That command center burning now. The carriers should be able to clean that up. The Siege Tank's trying to seal those Zealots in. So Kiko now has a key, uh, cohesive attack force in that bottom right. Command center's gone, though. And carriers have this now nice position where they can kind of go back and across uh, this situation. It looks like, ooh, a nice stasis there. An EMP, which maybe will help the situation. But the carriers can keep walking back and forth as long as Master Raid doesn't overextend. Siege tank down. That's going to allow... The Dragoons maybe to engage with these Goliaths. And this is Kiko just moving in these Goliaths piecemeal. I like the defense matrix. That's cute. But the Siege Tank trying to deal with the Dragoon. Unseaging. And Kiko just, I, I got to feel like, botching this attack a little bit. I think he should have just backed out with the rest of this attack force. Instead, he's going to end up losing it. And plummeting down to 130 supply. Master Ray suddenly with a 30 supply lead. Cleaning out the rest of those Siege Tanks. The Dragoons moving out. Looks like a, I saw a Nexus... Trying to be built and looks like it was killed off by those vultures. But Master Ray now in position to go ahead and grab a critical additional base. So grabbing an additional base of his own, denying additional bases to Kiko, and wiping out. Loses some carriers, yes, but I think it was worth it because he was able to deny bases, wipe out a lot of standing troops. Kiko turreting up at that 3 o'clock, wants to keep that base alive because that's his last mining base. But Master Ray comfortably grabbing this expansion. He still has a lot of these troops to the north, which I'm wondering if he's forgot about. But let's see if Kiko can remount an attack for us. Master Ray surging back up to a huge supply lead. He's mining off three bases. It's an, all he has to do is keep denying Kiko this bottom right-hand corner. And I think he'll be in a solid position. Just cannon up a little bit here, and he'll be in a solid position to win this. Kiko moving forward with the handful of Goliaths and Siege Tanks. He needs to stop this base from going up. Basically, he needs to get aggressive and stop Master Ray, and I'm not sure that he can do it and defend everything he's got. So it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't in this sort of situation for Kiko. It's if he gets aggressive and tries to stop Master Ray's bases, then he'll end up very likely getting counterattacked and end up losing expansions himself. And if he tries to slow play it to the bottom right, Master Ray's still going to mine it uh, and be able to continue to capitalize and build up behind this. And uh, yeah, point being, I'm, I'm not sure there's a lot of winning situations. He's got to rely on Master Ray making a mistake at this stage. This might be the mistake to win the match, though, because Master Ray not staging anything to go ahead and defend his new Nexus here. Most of his troops are at his natural expansion. Looks like now he's starting to move them forward. Kiko once again trying to build a command center in the dark in that bottom right. So he's going to try to do two at once, which is a very risky maneuver. Probes are here. Let's see if uh, there's a stasis. There is a stasis, but still an immense amount of Goliaths. However, the reinforcements are coming from the north. From Master Ray to engage the rest of this army. So yeah, Master Ray, I guess a pseudo pincer attack. Kiko just go moving this a little bit too slowly. So Master Ray able to just barrel down and wipe out what's left of this attack force. And I think that is going to be the official GG. The Dragoon's also catching that command center to that bottom right. So now Kiko completely out of options. 132 supply to 98 supply. <clears throat> and the carriers and Dragoon's just waiting for the unstasis. I'm not, I, I'm not sure what Kiko has left. I would expect that actually to be the GG moment. In frustration, killing his own supply depot to open up reinforcements here. Wants to kill a carrier, I think, in defiance. Does manage to get that carrier. It's like the spite from the grave. But 
I gotta assume the reality of the situation kind of sinking in that the bottom right hand base was not capped behind all of that. He didn't take out a nexus. I think it was more of a forced attack where he kind of had to press that uh, forward. Master Ray in a solid position just needs to, yeah, keep mining, keep macroing up. Some Kiko sending out a bit of an attack force to maybe clear things out in the bottom right and try to cap that. Master Ray can go ahead and pin those forces in, wipe things out. Looks like he's already starting to restage some forces from his main. This is starting to look thin, so Kiko potentially short on resources. Master Ray doesn't look like he's going to fill in with any more carriers. He's still got a lot of troops that have been built in the bottom left that he just needs to field someplace. And uh, Master Ray being, well, a little bit lazy in the midst of this, but I'll be honest. I feel like at this stage of things, I can't see. It would take a miracle for Kiko. Was that a recall? I don't think that was a recall. Maybe it was a recall. Recalling in that bottom right-hand corner. EMP catching... Was there a second Arbiter? Because I feel like the Arbiter, I guess they had full energy. It must have recalled there to the north. People can check. You can go back in the YouTube video to see whether that's the case or not. So staging up on the high ground. Filtering some more troops. It looks like he is going to try to pin this. It looks like he's going to try to do a two-pronged attack. Attack from the north. And move reinforcements in to attack uh, from the left as well. Single mine going to see some reinforcements coming in uh, from this direction. Kiko, 185 supply. But keep in mind Master Ray... A lot of his army not fully cohesive. So if it comes in, and these are still fully upgraded, it's going to be more like the endgame Pyrrhic victory, though, because Master Ray's still holding three expansions. But he does need to deny this to Kiko. Kiko, this is kind of the last hurrah. Building a command center at the natural, while this is kind of the, not I don't want to call it the Alamo. It's more like a, I'm not sure what to call this, but definitely a desperation situation. Kiko just praying that he can somehow get this natural expansion up. While Master Ray is slowly surrounding him on all ends. The Zealots moving forward, doing some mine clearing. Now the engagement happening. Arbiters coming from the north. Zealots flooding down. And you can just see chaos at the natural expansion. The Seed Shanks desperately trying to hold back the tide. This almost looks like, the Protoss almost looks like Zerg at this stage of things. Master Ray clearing through. There's Kiko going to call GG. Well played by Master Ray. He will advance to the winner's bracket. Kiko will go to the loser's bracket to engage. Exit. I think anything can happen in that matchup. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.